Hey, what's up? Team is Sherman here from Geek Psychology. This video is on three simple but important things to remember about intuitives. So this video is for two different sets of people. This is for sensors and for intuitives. So I'm going to kind of be switching back and forth. But starting out, let's talk about why it's for sensors. So th this is for the sensors who work with intuitives. Um, you live with intuitives. You have relationships with intuitives. Um, or an intuitive, I don't know how your relationships work, but uh, this will help you get a little bit more of that seeing eye to eye ability because um, it's, it's a vastly different perspective. And for the intuitives, this hopefully will um, give you just a little bit more insight into yourself, why you're acting this way and why that's actually not matching and meshing with how the sensors perceive things. Um, and so like one of the biggest things here to remember is that understanding how somebody uh, perceives the world, how which perceiving function they use, or even which dichotomy, if it's sensing or intuiting, is very important for clarity, for understanding of the other person. More than thinking, more than feeling, more than how you judge and make decisions and decide what you should do or what you should think in a situation, it's this is how the world is. This is the structure of reality. And this is how the world works. And so an intuitive is going to have a different perspective on that than a sensor. And with that, a lot of clashing can happen because you're just like, you don't see the world in the same way that I do. And that's ridiculous, you know, and, and you try to uh, explain it in your own way through your own lens and more problems come about, you know, <laughs> especially if you don't understand the, the language that the other type is using. Um, so once again, this is for sensors and intuitives. Uh, so however, you know, you're interacting with this, please do it in that way. But think about like, from my perspective, this is uh, a good way of viewing that information. Or from this perspective, this is how they probably see the world. So let's, let's go into the, the three different um, points. And it's, it was difficult to put them into three, just because it's such a broad, big category. But um, starting out first, intuitives make up about 25% of the population. Uh, it's about 15% for extroverted intuitives and 10% for introverted intuitives, from my understanding. Uh, and what I mean by this is this they lead or they use this as an auxiliary function. They have an intuitive function. So in the MBTI, there will be an N in their code. But what that means is that the world is essentially built and structured around sensing things. Um, and it has to be. If you want stability in the world, it needs to be based around sensory things. Um, and the thing though, intuitives will come with this feeling of being different because they are. They'll often feel lost, sometimes even alien. Like, I just work in a completely different way than most people and it's it's unsettling there's a lot of like restlessness that comes through it and and problems and this can happen at work at home relationships once again because like if you're in a sensing family everybody's a sensor but you're an intuitive everybody's gonna see you as the weird guy or girl um, and that's because you are in a way, right? You're just different. Um, and sometimes there's room, they save space for that, sometimes they don't. And in those places where they there is no space saved, uh, it's it causes issues, you know, just misunderstandings, um, exiling, <laughs> you know, just this is the weird child that we don't really talk about. <laughs> um, I'm laughing, but really that's a, that's a very sad thing. You can hear my baby crying in the background. Um, and with this also, intuitives will feel the need a lot of times to blend in with the sensory world. Because, you know, if, if you keep coming out with these crazy ideas, 
um, or acting in different ways, talking about things through symbols and metaphors all the time, uh, it, it kind of wears on people. Um, and it's just because that's not the general place that the world is. That's not the general standpoint, the world view or whatever. Um, so intuitives will have to or choose to blend in a lot of times and suppress that intuitive nature in order to, to, to wear the suit of a censor for a little while. Okay, number two, um, the intuitives often struggle with reality. You could call it practicality or whatever, but it's ideas, imagination, that is more interesting than what is real and tangible, what's actually going on, what's verifiable, reliable, all that stuff. Um, and so sensing gets pushed down, it gets pushed back, and it's just, it becomes a weak spot for a lot of us. Sometimes it comes out through um, relief states, you know, I'm, I'm going to just go enjoy the wilderness and things. Um, sometimes it just gets pushed all the way down and you fight the structure of reality. And that obviously can cause some problems. But for an intuitive, like this is the world that they live in. They're happily skipping over the concrete nature, the reality of the world, reality. And we're happy to do that. We're happy to live up in the clouds. We're happy to be at the top of that ladder of abstraction instead of down in the concrete world that everybody else lives in. And, you know, it's, it's important to remember that when you're dealing with an intuitive or when you are an intuitive dealing with other people, like how you see the world is going to cause some complications and also bring out a lot of gifts. So keep that in mind. The last one here is um, that their <laughs> intuitives have this high initiative, initiative to get into the future to speed up things, to see how their ideas will play out in the future. Now is not as entertaining, as I kind of mentioned before. Like, what is going on now, the reality of the world now, even the past, not as entertaining, not as interesting as what could happen. And so we, we often get really excited about wherever our ideas are going we want to see how those ideas are going to play out and how those concepts and theories and imaginations and memes and stuff are going to to end up in the future and because of that um we kind of get cloudy <laughs> we're just we're not here all the time we're not in the same present moment as a lot of other people and it can be a bad thing because you know you need to lock on to people you need to embrace the situation but if you're constantly if your natural state your flow state even is to get into ideas and brainstorm or or focus out the world and focus in on certain specific things um, that are abstract that are speculative it's just going to make your approach to reality your method of problem solving as well very different than the other 75% of the world. So keep those three things in mind. I know it, it was kind of like bumbling around a little bit, but there's, there's a lot in there. And remember that how you approach reality is your style. It's fine. That's good. But there are other languages in the world. There are other perspectives, other methods of learning and understanding the world. For censors, please accept that of us please see that as like this is how they work they have all these tools to offer as well they can create these new ideas change the world um, see things through metaphors and symbols and abstractions and push for change changing things creating a new reality of the world like what is clear to the rest of the world is likely going to be boring for us um, we want to notice the patterns the connections between things and play with those shift our mindset shift the actual structure of reality and, and fight the routines and traditions or 
um, like I said, shifting perspectives into other modes, into other people, into other things, and seeing it from different ways that are not common. And use the talents of brainstorming and um, wisdom or clear thought and insight in order to help your business and your relationship as well. And for intuitives, accept of yourself these things too. You're not going to fit in necessarily because of that population disparity. You're likely not going to accept things because of the practical application of them, but more of the meaning behind it or the possibility um, that could come out of it. And so knowing that and embracing that within yourself, I think is very important. So that's it. That's the end of this video. Just um, keep that in mind as you're going through your day, whenever you interact with an intuitive, whether it's yourself interacting with yourself or from a sensor's point of view, interacting with an intuitive. Please keep that in mind because I think it would be very beneficial for us. All right. So thank you very much for watching. Keep up the lifelong questing. Good luck. Have fun. Peace.